Hello everyone and welcome back here. Um, I, it's been a while since I made a video and um, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. It's about my side project, an online ear training application that I started working on maybe about two years ago, something like that. And I released it last year in November and I've been working on it on and off ever since. So what I want to talk about in this video is, well, first of all, I'd like to show you guys the project that I made. And then I want to talk about what uh, technologies I used, how I made it. And then lastly, I'll talk about uh, what I learned and what I wish I'd learned and uh, where it's going from here. Um, so let's get into it first. If you go to earbeater.com slash online ear training, then you will see what I'm seeing right here. Um, you can uh, basically it's just a, an app where you can practice your skills to compare interval sizes, identify intervals chords, chord inversions, and scales, and things like that. So it's basically just something that you can use to, uh, well, practice your oral skills and practice your ear and become a better musician that way. Right now I can't do much. I, I have to log in to see, see my saved score, so let's do that. First of all, I will log in. I will use my Google account, and, and then I should log in. And then we can see I have a few scores here, right here. I haven't been playing too much. I don't like practicing this too much. Um, I like writing the code instead, which is uh, so it's up to other people to practice. Anyways, um, so basically what this app does is uh, it quizzes you in different disciplines here. You can see you have compare interval sizes and identify intervals and chords, chord inversion and scales. So if you click on one of those, you can you get a list of different um, exercises here and you can switch between them and you can see what's what they're all about out here and um so you can, it, it it takes you through from from easy to hard it gradually introduces more complex chords as you can see here um when i go through these but if that's not enough for you you can go and you can go to the user exercises tab and then you can create your own custom exercise so let's say that uh you want to practice ionian uh, Aeolian and Altered and a Mixolydian B9, B13, something like that. And let's give it a title. And you can add a description here, you don't have to. And then you save the exercise and then you get it right here. And then you can just go ahead and you can play this exercise. Now it's a Mixolydian. That was not that wasn't altered. So now you can see I answered incorrectly here. So you can see the difference between and I can click. And you also get the answer up here on the on the staff above. So that is basically what it is. And you, it takes you through these 20 questions and then it tells you how well you did and if you should try again or or not. You can also there are, there's some different settings here uh, that you can play around with. But let me just go back here and um show that another thing that I actually added recently is you can share a link. So you can just uh, copy this one here. You can open a new tab and you can start the exercise here. So so that's uh, that's basically how it works. So what I want to talk about now is how did I actually make this? Because I started building this about two years ago and I'd only been coding uh, for about two years and I've been doing only small little projects like like you know building a calculator or a weather app that you have to do on free code camp but um, I wanted to make this thing and I had this in mind for a long time that this was the ultimate goal that this is my side project this is the project that I want to work on in my spare time so why and how did I make this thing and I actually knew that I wanted to make this thing I had the idea a long time ago uh, before I started learning how to code. That's actually one of the reasons, if not the main reason, that I started to learn coding. Um, but let me tell you about how I made it first and what technologies I used. So I used Vue.js for this one. Um, and with that, I used Beautify, which is a UI um, layer that is based upon... It's, it's based on Google's uh, material design, which makes it easy to add different buttons and forms and and stuff like that and it's also based on as i said the google material design that so so users already know that and they're familiar with that from other google products so uh, that was pretty easy to use and uh, i really like it a lot i use some other libraries as well and uh, one of them is tonal js which is a really cool little 
library for music theory you can uh you can get all different kinds of scales and modes and and yeah it's it's really cool you should check it out i have some other videos on this channel you can i probably link to it in the description here and you can check it out if you if you like uh then i used howler js basically just to play the sounds you know of the piano sound you heard before and then i used vexflow to to show the musical notation so the rest i made by myself and one of them is like this little sound engine as i call it and uh it it it's basically the heart of the app that's the one that that plays the sounds and if if it's a scale it'll play a scale uh it'll you, you'll just pass the notes to it and tell it whether it should be played ascending or descending or in harmony and then uh, it'll play that for you and it'll calculate uh, the piano range how many if you have an inversion will it exceed the range and it'll do stuff like that there are also functions in there to to make inversions the root first second third inversion whatever uh, so that is kind of the heart of the thing you know um, I also I started out making the piano actually uh, because I knew that I was going to need a, a piano to visualize it and that's when I got into Vue.js and I started playing around with it so that's actually the first thing I made this piano with an uh, it's an SVG piano um, and you can pass in some correct notes and some incorrect notes and then they will be displayed in either red or uh, orange depending on if they're correct or incorrect so what did I learn from this um, well I learned that it was important for me to start to have my own project, something that I was passionate about doing, that I am passionate about doing. And I also learned that um, it's important to, to just jump into a bigger project at some point. You know, I've been making, when I first started learning how to code, I, I used uh, Free Code Camp. And the first project, and that's the way it should be, but the first project are very small, like build a calculator, build a weather app, things like that, which is really cool in the beginning. But at some point you have to move from there to like um, starting on a bigger project that you have probably have no idea how you're going to solve when you start on it. Um, so that's my first takeaway from this thing. It's important to get into bigger projects at some point when you're first uh, learning how to code. Um, stick with the small project first, but when you feel that you're ready, and you're probably not going to feel that you're ready ever, but anyway, just, just get into it. That's what I did, and I bumped my head against the wall many times, and there were many roadblocks along the way, and many of the modules, many of the things, I've been rewriting them, and I've been refining them, and I've been, um, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes, and I still have a lot of mistakes in this app. You know, there are still many things, there are still small bugs here and there that I yet haven't found, you know, that I'm still looking for. So, but my point is that if you don't take the leap, if you don't start, then you'll probably never do it. And an important thing about doing that is that you will inevitably find something you don't know anything about, but it shouldn't scare you. You should you should start a bigger project anyways. Uh, Another thing that is uh, great for me is this is my side project. This is my this is my hobby. I don't have to finish. I, there's no deadline. This is my learning project, you know. Um, so I basically just started this. I wanted to make it and I have a few users and people like it and stuff like that. But basically it's for me. It's for me to learn. And I haven't had anyone to tell me what to do and when to finish anything. I haven't had any deadlines, only self-imposed deadlines. And um, that has been really nice because I have been able to take the time that I wanted. And yeah, sometimes though, and that's my next point, sometimes I just want to finish. Sometimes I just want to get something done. And even though I know that I should probably have rewritten some code or I should have refactored it, maybe I have implemented some dirty hack just to get it to work and uh, I think it goes for everyone we do that once in a while and then we uh, we, we put a mental load up here and uh, okay I'm gonna I'm gonna correct that in the in the future and that's another thing I've learned about this that um, sometimes I'm too eager to move on and I just want it to work and I've been working on a bug for days and uh, I know I have this little dirty trick that is probably not the right way to do it but I'm gonna do it anyway so I can move on and then I will probably look at it later but maybe I will not so the thing is one of the things that I've learned from this is that I have to refactor I have to split bigger files into smaller files I have to make good comments I have to um, yeah there's so many things because it becomes a mess after a while and of course in the beginning it's your own project you're you you do not have any other developers on the project so 
you think, okay, this is I wrote this code, I will probably remember this in a couple of months, but trust me, no, you will not remember that unless you're very special. Um, but I'm not. So I tend to the code that I should have refactored when I first wrote it or a couple of days later when it was still available um, in the memory. <laughs> I should probably have have refactored it and, and rewritten it. So because sometimes I bump into some code that is hard to read, hard to understand, and then I have to spend a couple of hours to actually find out what it what it does before I can move on and correct the bugs that or implement new features. Um, um, yeah, and one of the new features I implemented lately was like and that I started implementing that like a, about a year after I first launched this a couple of months ago. And that was uh, the back end where I have used Google, um, Google Firebase for that. And it just, it took me like a week just to get into like the different modules and the different um, things in the, in, in the app and find out how everything works and where should I place this and where should I place that? Because I, I hadn't played around with it for a while and uh, some of the code was really messy. So I had to actually take a week and clean up a lot of stuff before I um, before I started implementing that that backend. Another thing that's great about having your own project is that you have direct access to the users. So they will probably, if they like the app, actually some people they they write you, they email you, and they they tell you that they like the app. But uh, there's this thing, and if I could fix this, it would be really cool and and things like that. So they send me bug reports and I have direct access to them. I, it's not like I have a project manager that will tell me what the customer says or what the boss says. So that's pretty cool. And uh, and when you when you reply to some of those people, they're actually pretty surprised. Oh my God, he replied to me, that's so cool, you know? And uh, and then of course you have to implement it or you have to, to find out if that is something you wanna implement, uh, a new feature that a user is suggesting that you should implement. Um, but if enough users ask for it, then you should uh, probably do it. You know, you can keep the users happy. One last thing I want to talk about is, can I monetize this? Do I monetize this? And yes, I actually do. Uh, as you can see, I do have ads. I actually have an ad blocker here, but if I if I turn this one off, you can see that I have ads on, on, the, um, on the service here. You can see it shows up here and it's in the list here. And also if I start a game, let's try this one here. There's an ad here. So um, to be honest, I don't really like ads and uh, I'm using an ad blocker myself and you're, you can do that as well, you know, but some people don't and some people actually click on these ads. It's not a lot of money I'm making, but it's enough to keep the site running, um, pay, pay for the servers and everything. So for now it's, um, it's okay, I think. But uh, what I really wanted to do was make a really, really good version, like make a, a freemium and a premium version where you pay to get more features, but that's a lot of work. And another thing is that it's, if you actually ask for money directly from the users, they expect it to be a service that works really, really well. And because I'm only one person to maintain this thing and because I have another job and I have yeah I have many different jobs, I don't have unlimited amounts of time to, um, to spend on this project. So if, if let's say that I was charging money for it uh, on a monthly basis and the server breaks down or something happens or I find a bug that I don't know how to how to fix, you know, and I'm only me, you know, I can't just, uh, I I don't think that's fair to, uh, to the users to uh, charge money for that. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions about the app and how to get started on something like this and you want to know more, then uh, leave a comment down there and I'll try to answer to my best ability and um, I don't know what else to say, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if there's anything I can help you with, let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.